Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Royce and welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. And today my heart goes out to the Lord of the Rings fandom and the Tolkien fandom because as bad as we thought the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power on Amazon was going to be, it's about to get a lot worse. But first, let's introduce today's beer. Today's beer is Founders Dirty Bastard Scotch Style Ale. This is uh, on the stronger side. Um, fantastic ale. And I really like it. It's good. But without any further ado, let's get into what just happened. A, uh, a multimedia group, or a, I guess a, the transmedia group is what they call themselves because they, they deal in multiple different uh, forms of media, actually just purchased the rights to Lord of the Rings. So let's jump over to Deadline. From Deadline, Embracer Group acquires IP rights to The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Swedish video game company Embracer Group has acquired Middle Earth Enterprises, a division of the Zal Zents Company, which owns the intellectual property catalog and the world wide rights to the Lord of the Rings trilogy and The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. And for a lot of people who don't know, J.R.R. Tolkien actually uh, sold a lot of, uh, sold certain rights back in, I wa was it the 60s or the 70s? I want to say it was the 70s. Um, because Tolkien, believe it or not, was not a wealthy man at all. And during hard times, as much as he didn't want to do this, he had to provide and care for his family. And so uh, he did what he could and uh, for the reasons that he absolutely hated, he didn't want to do this, but again, he had to provide for his family, and now we are seeing uh, what can happen uh, and what is happening and what Tolkien feared himself. The financial terms of the acquisition were not disclosed, but the deal means Embracer Group will pick up the motion picture, video game, board game, merchandising, theme parks, and stage production rights to the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit franchise, as well as matching rights in other Middle-Earth-related literary works authorized by the Tolkien Estate and Harper Collins, which have yet to be explored. And the problem is here with whoever is the head of the Tolkien Estate. Sorry if you guys can hear that. The puppies are playing in the background, and puppies gotta play. But for... For those who don't know, whoever is the head of the Tolkien estate right now, I believe it may be his grandson. I am not sure. It's Christopher Tolkien's son. But they don't see the legacy of Tolkien anymore. All they see is the money, and they feel like they've been living in Tolkien's shadow and want to strike out there on their own and do their own thing. The problem is, is that they are not as creative or as intelligent as J.R.R. Tolkien was. And so thusly, they have to use his property and bastardize it to a point to make money. I am truly excited to have The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, one of the world's most epic fantasy franchises, join the Embracer family, opening up more transmedia opportunities, including synergies across our global groups, said Lars Wing, uh, Wing, Wingfors, Wing, Winefors, Winefors, I'm going with Winefors, founder and group CEO <clears throat> and group CEO Embracer Group. I am thrilled to see what lies in the future for this IP with the freedom and the asmodi as I don't know that word. I've never actually or free mode and free mode and asmodi as a start within the group. Going forward, we also look forward to collaborating with both existing and uh, new external licenses for of our increasingly stronger IP portfolio. So to these people, this is just a way to enhance their portfolio. That's all that they are wanting to do is enhance their portfolio and take Tolkien's work and adapt it and change it to their liking. As part of the deal, Middle Earth Enterprises will form part of the newly founded operative group Embracer Free Mode. The company will continue to operate independently under the existing Middle Earth Enterprises leadership team. In a... Um, in a statement, uh, Marty Glick, COO of the Zal Zentz Company, said, We at the, the Zant, Zantz Company have had the honor over the past half century of stewarding the Tolkien rights so the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit fans worldwide could enjoy the winning epic films, uh, challenging video games, first-rate theater 
uh, and merchandise of every variety. We could not be more thrilled that this <clears throat> that it is Embracer now taking up the responsibility, and we are confident their group will take it to new heights and dimensions while maintaining homage to the spirit of these great literary works. And I could read the rest of this article, but nope, and I will because it's not very long, so let's do that. Uh, Embracer's operative group, uh, Asmodee Group, has a... Okay, that's what Asmodee was. Asmodee has a long-standing relationship with Tolkien IP, having published the Lord of the Rings board game over 20 years ago, as well as producing the Lord of the Rings, the card game. Key upcoming works set in Middle-Earth, uh, in which Middle-Earth Enterprises has financial interest, including Amazon's highly anticipated series, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, which we are well aware is absolutely eviscerating the lore, which debuts September 2nd. 2022, as well as the Warner Bros. animated movie, The Lord of the Rings, The War of the Rohirrim, set for release in 2024, and the EA, Mo the EA mobile game, The Lord of the Rings, Heroes of Middle-Earth. Oh, boy. I am so sorry for the... Tolkien fans and the people who have read his works and who have had a profound impact from what that man has done because something is about to happen to this franchise. Um, and had they not said anything about, had they detached themselves from the rings of power? Yeah, I, 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 I may have had a different thought process here, but that almost solidified it for me. The Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit are about to become another franchise. And they are going, and as all franchises do, they cannot stick to the lore. Because guess what? If you stick to the lore and tell that one story over and over again, that doesn't make money. And the problem that I see here is these people are out for money. J.R.R. Tolkien was a brilliant man and somebody who thought very deeply about the world and came up with the idea of the Lord of the Rings, the Silmarillion, and the Hobbit in the trenches of World War I. He cared deeply about his faith, and he cared very, very deeply about how the world was changing. Industrialism bothered him. He remembers the factories coming in when he was a child. He always said that, you know, Hobbiton, where the Hobbits lived, was the world that he remembered as a child and what he wished the world would go back to. <clears throat> I believe one of the things that Tolkien and quote me and, 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 and if I am wrong here, absolutely correct me in the comments. And if it's bad enough, I will make, but I believe Tolkien's philosophy was that the world, the world doesn't repeat its history. It rhymes its history, but only slightly worse. And as it, keeps getting repeated through the generations and the decades it just becomes worse and worse and worse and on a downward spiral which is somewhat of a very negative outlook on life but I don't know if I would disagree with that entirely I don't know if I could disagree with that entirely we are about to see the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit turn into what Star Wars has turned into. And I hate saying Star Wars at this point in time, but that was the franchise that I cared about deeply. And I watched it ruined in front of my eyes. And I am so utterly sorry for what is about to happen to the Lord of the Rings. And I am so sorry that the people who have loved this franchise, and again, I have researched Tolkien myself. He's the reason I understand what philology is and how language has changed and you know, he inspired me to look into, you know, different languages and, and, and how they all work and go back in time. And I've actually found some fantastic channels that does, that talk about these things. And I, I owe that to Tolkien. Tolkien, in my limited, in my limited, sorry about that, in my limited experience with uh, Tolkien, I, I know that he made me a better man, a smarter man, and... A man who wants to learn more, always. Not necessarily about Tolkien or the Lord of the Rings, but just about life and the greater world around me. So thank you so much for watching this video. And I will see you all next time right here on A Drink With Crazy. Thank you so much for watching this. And I will keep covering this as it advances and comes out. So...
Until next time, guys. Cheers, everyone. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.